Jesus was a master storyteller. He used parables to teach profound truths about God. One such parable, the parable of the tenants, is found in three Gospels, Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 to 46, Mark chapter 12, verses 1 to 12, and Luke chapter 20, verses 9 to 19. This parable, told during the final week of Jesus' life, carries a powerful message about God's love, human rejection, and the consequences of disobedience. Jesus told this parable to the chief priests and elders of the people. These were the religious leaders of the day. They were questioning Jesus' authority. They wanted to know where he got the right to do the things he was doing. This parable was Jesus' answer. He told them a story about a landowner, a vineyard, and some very bad tenants. The story would have been familiar to them. It was a common way of teaching in those days. Jesus used this parable to challenge the religious leaders. He wanted them to see their own sin. He wanted them to see that they were rejecting God. A certain landowner planted a vineyard with great care. He put a wall around it. He dug a wine press in it. He built a tower. Then he rented the vineyard to tenants and went into a far country. When the harvest time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to receive the fruits of it. But the tenants beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, but they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. The parable ends with a question. When the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? The answer, of course, is that he will destroy those wicked men. Like many of Jesus' parables, the parable of the tenants is an allegory. It's a story within a story. Each character and element represents something deeper. The landowner in the parable represents God. The vineyard represents Israel, God's chosen people. The tenants represent the religious leaders of Israel, those entrusted with God's word and care for his people. The servants the landowner sends represent the prophets sent by God throughout history. These prophets were rejected, persecuted, and even killed. And finally, the son represents Jesus himself, God's own son, sent to call his people back to himself. The tenants' actions in the parable clearly illustrate the rejection of God's messengers. They were entrusted with God's vineyard, but instead of caring for it, they exploited it for their own gain. They refused to honor the landowner by giving him his share of the fruit. When the landowner sent servants to collect what was due, they beat them, killed them, and treated them with utter contempt. This mirrors the way the prophets were treated throughout Israel's history. Time and again, God sent his messengers, but they were ignored, rejected, and even killed. Their refusal to acknowledge the son's rightful place as heir reveals the depth of their rebellion. They wanted the vineyard for themselves. The parable doesn't shy away from the consequences of rejecting God. The landowner, upon hearing of the tenant's actions, will come and destroy those wicked men and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. This speaks of God's judgment on those who persistently reject him and his messengers. But it also speaks of, you know, a new beginning. The vineyard, representing God's kingdom, will not be left desolate. It will be entrusted to others who will be faithful. This points towards the inclusion of the Gentiles into God's kingdom. Those who were once far off would now be brought near through faith in Jesus Christ. The parable of the tenants is a stark reminder of the importance of faithfulness and obedience to God. It challenges us to examine our own hearts and consider how we are responding to God's love and his call on our lives. Are we bearing fruit for him? Are we treating his messengers with respect and heeding their warnings? Or are we, like the tenants, rejecting him and his son? The parable also offers hope. Even though God's chosen people rejected him, his plan of salvation would not be thwarted. He would raise up a new people for himself, a people from every tribe and tongue and nation who would worship him in spirit and in truth. This parable calls us to humility. It reminds us that we are not the owners of our lives. We are tenants entrusted with gifts and responsibilities from God. Let us be found faithful. Let us produce fruit for his glory. And let us welcome the Son with open arms, for he is the heir of all things.